Morning everyone, Saturday. Almost the end of October already. Wow, winter's coming. It's a beautiful day today, but we got some snow coming down the mountain and uh, it'll be here soon. Hopefully not that soon though. So a lot of people have asked me lately about compression on saws. You know, for years, I never did compression tests for years. Most saws I'd work on, especially if they're older used ones, you know, I pull the muffler off, have a look at the piston. If it's not scored and the rings are still moving, the thing will run. You know, unless it's super, super sloppy in the intake, being a piston port engine, you don't want to hold its charge, but it'll still run. It'll just rattle a bit and won't have that much power. Or some I've had rings wear when guys are slashing in the side of the row with a lot of dust. Uh, and then they use the wrong air filter. They use a nylon one instead of the extreme uh, flock type one. And that'll eat rings up pretty quick. But, you know, I might change rings and something like that. But like falling saws and stuff, I never change rings. It's either a whole piston or a jug and slug. They're normally wore right out or the thing's smashed up or cracked. It's done its tour of duty. You know, I got three saws in the bench here right now. I got a 461, used one of a friend of mine's. It's, you know, a few years old. Uh, 390 that's probably a couple years old and I got an old 61 white top which is as you know from the 80s right um, so I just did a compression test I use the echo compression tester let me turn you over this way zoom in a little bit See if I can do that come on there we go so I use this echo Chindal compression tester I have uh, adapters too to do the 10 millimeter um, spark plug holes that are quite common now on, on a lot of equipment where is it I just want to show it to you uh, there's one there we go here oh I got it somewhere anyways it's not in front of me right now but it doesn't matter I have an adapter these are all 14 millimeter thread ones. And um, I just did these ones. So this 390, you know, it's a couple of years old. It's got 140 PSI. This 3, 461, which is a few years old, same thing. 140, actually above, 150, sorry. I thought it was 140, it's 150. I wrote it right on there. When I checked them, I hold full throttle and I pull it over until this, the needle doesn't move anymore. So this is the old 61 of Tom Walker's, which a nice fella sent me uh, an OEM top end that I'm going to switch this over. Um, but let me show you something. I want to I want to kind of approve a, a fact here. That's really why I never used to use compression testers. I think, but I try to now with some some equipment at work, like weed eaters and blowers and stuff, where uh, you know they don't. Uh, you kind of need to teach young mechanics how to really uh, check that before they start throwing parts at something that they don't need to because the motor's shot. Okay, so this old 61 white top. Okay, that was plenty enough pulls, eh? Look at that. 170 eight pounds of psi so you figure oh this motor's got to be great man being the age of it right you know 19 i don't know 1980 maybe okay so let me show you something that's got the more compression than these two these two are not scored i know they aren't i've had the mufflers off Look at this. See if you can see this. Scored piston. Hope you guys can see that. Scored piston, but the ring's still moving. And this one's got more compression than these. That's a one ring piston. These are two ring pistons. They got less compression than this old 61. Now, how odd is that, eh? So don't believe the compression tester on, on a lot of two-stroke stuff. Take your muffler off and have a look. You know, this thing, 
would probably run, but it'll just just die out. It won't have any power, right? And it's just going to start taking the chrome off the cylinder and produce some more aluminum uh, shavings, right? So yeah, isn't that something interesting, eh? So there you go. There's your compression test. Uh, most most saws should be you know 100 to 150 pounds if not a little bit more um depending on the model and the type of uh head design it's got like the squish in it but anything below 100 they you know they're, they're hardly gonna probably not run too good i should say more around 90 actually i've had some you know 90 to 100 that the pistons aren't scored and they still run so there you go man you know it is a good tool for sure for new guys and just everyone else just to understand stuff but check your motors too man this thing was only three bolts to take the muffler off right so i don't know it's my opinion of it anyways take it or leave it <laughs> it's a beautiful day so i'm gonna get out um i got some work tomorrow to do um at my daughter's house i'm gonna help her uh work on her yard a bit blow some leaves off around then i'm gonna go to my mom and dad's place and uh, clean their roof off and have a little uh, visit with them as well. And I might stop by and see old Bucket if he's around tomorrow. He lives out by my where my daughter lives, so we'll see how it goes. Anyways, I got work to do, and we got to head to town a little later. Or to the Nanaimo, that is. We're already in the town, Parksville. So keep your saw in the wood, stick in the ice, rubbing around. Have a great weekend. Get out and do some cutting or fishing or hiking or biking, whatever you want to do. Get some exercise. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Check out the walkersawshop.com online store. And I'm going to try to get out and cut with that old McCulla 610 I showed you yesterday. So, hey, have a great day. Love you all. Bye.